Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. And today I want to answer a question that I've been getting for months. What's the difference between tequila and mezcal? And also I'm going to try to explain a little bit about Clase Azul's mezcal and how it's a little bit different than most. So stay with me and let's get started. All right. So I want to start by answering the number one question. What's the difference between tequila and mezcal? First of all, both tequila and mezcal are made in Mexico. Number two, all tequilas are actually mezcals. <gasps> and hang tight, I'll make it very clear in a second. Basically, by law, all tequilas can be produced from only one type of agave plant, which is the blue agave. Woo! Whereas mezcals can be produced from over 30 different types of agave plants. And one of the main ones is the Espadín Agave, which is almost 85% produced in the Oaxaca region in Mexico. Okay, so now that we know the difference between tequila and mezcal, let's talk a little bit more about Clase Azul's mezcal. Now, Clase Azul actually produces two types of mezcals that they sell in the U.S. There's the black matte bottle that I have here, and they also have another turquoise wow. matte bottle that I don't have available because it's nearly impossible to find. But let's talk about the black matte bottle today. So this particular mezcal is from the northern part of Mexico. It's from the state of Durango. Now, remember I said that there are over 30 different types of agave plants that they can use to make mezcal? So this particular mezcal is made from an agave plant called cenizo. It's a wild agave plant, which is super cool. Now, I think I'm gonna give myself a little pour so that I can drink and continue talking about this mezcal. My favorite part, the pour. Now, most bottles, let's see if this one, yeah, this one you can't, you can't ring the bottle. Oh, oh, oh. Could ring the bottle. You have to try a little bit hard though. It's not as easy as the Reposado. <laughs> I love this bottle. Beautiful cap, matching logo, all handcrafted. The only thing I don't like about the bottle, honestly, uh, it's super cool. It's matte and everything, right? But the only problem is like when you touch it or if you want to wipe it with a, the, the rag or microfiber cloth or anything, I mean, it, it like, I think it absorbs everything into the, the grains of this bottle. Like, look, I'll do a, a line and you can see I just, I just made that line with my finger. So that's the only thing I don't like about this bottle. Otherwise, super cool. Super, super cool, matte finish bottle, beautiful addition to any bar. I love it. Okay, let's talk about the color. I mean, that's gonna be pretty easy. It's clear. Um, looks like a Blanco, but don't mistake it for a Blanco. It's not a Blanco. Now, another question that I've also gotten is, how do you drink a mezcal? Uh, so, the best way to drink a mezcal is number one, at room temperature. You don't want it to be too cold. You definitely don't want it to be warm. Room temperature is the perfect way to drink a mezcal. Second, you wanna take small sips. This is something you wanna enjoy. You wanna, I mean, it's so strong in flavors and aromas. You wanna absorb and enjoy it. So, small, small sips. By the way, I'm already feeling the smoke level on this mezcal is, is through the roof. I mean, I'm holding the glass with at least 10 inches, 12 inches away from my nose or my face, and the, the aromas are so strong. Uh, and I've said this, I've, I've done a video about the mezcals in the past, uh, and the num I mean, You'll have different websites. You'll have even the Class Azul website describe so many different types of aromas. But I'm telling you from personal experience, the number one smell aroma that I get instantly from this particular mezcal is leather. You'll never hear that anywhere. I don't know why people don't write about it. It's really, really strong, the leather smell. I mean, I'm getting it from, again, I'm holding it about a foot away from my nose. It's incredible. So anyway, let's take the first sip. Uh, I'm so excited. It's been a while since I've had the mezcal. Mm, smells amazing. Also, 
you want your glass to be as wide as possible because you want to actually experience and absorb all of that aroma, all of those smells, all of those different flavors. So as wide as possible, this is actually one of the widest rocks glasses I have. Um, it's wider than most. It's, it, you can see it, it that looks like a cone actually on top. Um, historically, you have a short, I don't remember the name, but I'll try to add it in the description below. Um, it was a short uh, cup, I think made out of clay, wide and short is what they would drink mezcal from. So I don't have that, I have this, and let's get to my favorite part. Mm. I'll tell you, the only thing that's missing is a good cigar. This mezcal deserves to be paired with a good cigar. One of my favorites, the Davidoff Yamasa. You drink this Woo! with a Davidoff Yamasa, you don't need anything else. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing pairing. I promise you that. So, what would you pair this mezcal with? This particular mezcal, believe it or not, is best paired with fish. I'm telling you, a lot of people might argue, but I promise if you're drinking this, you want to have fish. It could be shellfish, it could be a fatty fish, it could be a Chilean sea bass, it can be bronzino, whatever you like. But I guarantee if you drink this while you're eating fish, you're going to be very, very happy. Promise you that. So let's talk about the process of making this mezcal. As opposed to in an autoclave, agave for mezcal is cooked in an underground cone-shaped pit lined with volcanic rock, charcoal, and wood. Wow. The piñas are thrown into the pit and then they light a fire. Once they have the fire, then they cover it with dirt. That underground pit cooks the piñas, giving them that smoky, caramelized texture. The agave is then fermented and distilled in clay pots. So, I mean, the process is completely different than making tequila. Now, the cool thing about mezcal is that they can be aged as well. Just like tequila, they're aged in barrels. Now, tequila, they have blanco, reposado, Añejo, extra añejo, and so on. Versus mezcal, they have joven, they have reposado, and they have añejo. Now, the time frame is typically the same as the tequila. So, the joven is kept in the barrels for less than two months. The reposado is kept in the barrels from two months to a year. The añejo is obviously kept from a year to three years in the barrels. The longer they are in the barrels, the better they taste, the smoother they become. Finally, let's talk about the price point and availability. Today, this is actually available. Not very common, but it's available. Price points today vary from $349 as high as $599. Wow. Uh, there was a time in 2020, 2021, where they were selling these for over $500 at minimum. Premium pricing. Today, you can find it for in the threes. $329, $349, $379, $400 $400 for sure. Now, is it worth it? Um, it depends. I bought it. It looks great in my bar. Am I going to buy it again? Probably not. Uh, do I enjoy it? Only if I'm drinking it alone with a cigar, it's amazing. So my recommendation, is it worth it? I don't think it's worth the price point. If it was a $100, $150 bottle, yes. $300 plus, $400, $500, that's outrageous. But that's just my opinion. Um, I bought it, it looks great in my bar. I love the way it looks. I love the way it's paired with some of my cigars. I love the way it tastes with certain foods. Um, I would not want to drink this with other mezcals in a flight, in a tour, 
uh, because I don't want to be disappointed. Um, it's okay. It's okay. Do I recommend it? Again, it's good. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you tried this tequila, if you think it's worth it, or if you ever tried the blue bottle. I've never tried the blue bottle. Let me know what you think. Cheers.